Welcome again, guys. Uh, today, we will complete the rest of the stereoisomerisms that we started in the previous class. If you need to understand the first part of the stereoisomerism, which was about the geometrical isomers, you can check this um, video in the description box down below. And now let's go to the optical isomer. So the first thing that we have to put in our mind, as we just uh, remember, that the stereoisomerism is a case at which the two molecules have the same molecular formula and they have the same structural formula, but we have difference in the arrangement and the space. And the same thing here is for the optical isomer, in which we have same molecular formula and the same structural formula, but they have another different thing here that makes sense, by the way, at which the carbon that is bonded to four different groups so, what's the meaning of carbon bonded to four different groups? I just want to give you a simple example. And this carbon makes uh, four bonds, you can see. Uh, let's do it in form of tetrahedral. Um, so, suppose that you have a CH3, here you have hydrogen, um, here you have uh, Br, and here you have, let's say, Cl. At this point, you can notice that the carbon in here is surrounded by four different groups of atoms. So you have methyl group, here you have hydrogen, you have a bromine, you have a chlorine. And at that point, we can say, yes, this molecule in here contains something called optical isomer. By the way, if you look at this carbon, you can notice that it makes four sigma bonds at that point, and which means, or let's say in other words, the hybridization of this carbon in here is sp3. In other words, we never ever find an optical isomer in a double bond. It's always, always single bond. All right. In my question for our lesson today, if I want to represent this molecule, as we can see, in form of a three-dimensional structure, we can notice that these uh, two bonds are in the same plane. This one here is behind the plane, and this one here is outside the plane. So how can I represent, let's say, um, let's call this one here A, let's call this B, C, and D. You have to put in our mind, we have a rule, and this rule works for all of these uh, uh, molecules. I just want to inform you something, and we have a lot of details about this lesson, but these details are not included in the A-level. Uh, so if you complete that uh, in the university, you, you may take these details. The first thing here, if I want to represent this one, we draw the carbon in here first. And then, since A and B are in the same plane, we represent them by uh, a normal um, like a normal line, a straight line like this. And how can I represent this bond that is below the plane to represent this in, in form of the dotted line, which is the D atom. Here we have A and here we have B. How can I represent this line that is shown here outside the plane? It's represented by a witch like this. And yeah, you have to fill it like this. Yeah. So it means that this wedge represents that the bond is outside the plane. The dotted one here is behind the plane. Here it represents the front, okay, or the wedge. In both A and B are in the same plane. Okay, so this is the three-dimensional structure. And now, guys, let's test our knowledge. If I ask you to draw the three-dimensional structure for CH3, CH, branch, OH, and CH2, CH3. So at the first look at this compound, you feel like, oh my God, we are in deep trouble. And how can I know? We just used to make a carbon with four different groups, but it looks complicated in here. So the first thing, or let's say the key, the key word to do this process is drawing the displayed formula for this compound and then determine the carbon at which you have um, the four different groups. So first of all, you have to say I have a carbon CH3 and it's bonded to carbon with H and here we have OH and this one is bonded to C, right? And then CH3. So the first thing here, um, this carbon, by the way, um, 
yeah, it's bonded to three hydrogens. Here we have hydrogens, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. So now it's clear. You can see that this carbon is not bonded to four different groups. And the same thing here is for this carbon and this. So the only carbon that you can see that, oh, it's our target, is this one in here. How can I draw the three-dimensional structure for this? It's very easy. It's a piece of cake. The first thing here is draw the hero, which is this carbon. I have to draw it. And then you have to say, oh, it contains hydrogen. Okay, I will draw the hydrogen. Great. It's very nice. And on the left side of this carbon, we have CH3. And that's why you have to write the CH3. All right. I'm drawing something that's, let's say, um, a very simple. And that's why we change it to three-dimensional structure. And then we can say that it's bonded to another one, which is the OH. Okay, I draw the OH. And then here we have the whole group in here. And by the way, you can... Write it in a concise way, like C2H5. Easy. You can draw like C2H5. So how can I draw this in form of a three-dimensional structure? All right, all right. So we have to say we have carbon, and then it's bonded to hydrogen. Okay, the one above is always in a straight line. And on the left side, okay, I need it to be, it's okay, I can draw it like this. And the middle, it's a wedge, and that's why we can draw it in form of this, like this. And then we have something that is behind, and we put it in here, and we write C2H5. We call the carbon that is bonded to four different groups a chiral center. Okay, it's called chiral center. So, the chiral center is a carbon that is bonded to four different groups. And actually we have something like this. But we told you that we have isomers. So where is the isomer in this guy here? How can I draw it? You have to put in your mind. I want to erase all of this stuff in here. In order to find another isomer, we have to draw the mirror image. How can I draw the mirror image of this in here? First of all, you have to draw the mirror at first. I have to draw this one in here into here, but in a form of the reflection. So how can I draw it? We draw the carbon in here and we have H because those are the same. Okay. Okay. And the carbons are the same, which are okay. Okay. We have C2H5 and it's dashed line or dotted line. I have to say, okay, C C2H5. Don't reflect the letters, they remain as they are. And then we have a wedge in here. I have to represent this wedge and we just make it a bit aligned to the left because you know, like you have a mirror in here and we put H. Okay, good. So you have CH3 and it's a straight line. We draw CH3. And at that point you can say H with H. Okay, um, here we have carbon with carbon, uh, this one with this one. And we have CH3 with CH3, and we have OH with OH. So this, these are two mirror images to each other. Those two compounds are different, and they are not the same. Okay. They look like each other. They have the same molecular formula. They have the same structural formula, but they are not the same because they have difference in their arrangement in the space. And that's why they are not the same. How can I know that they are not the same? As long as you have a carbon with four different groups, then you have a chiral center, then you have an optical isomer, and you can make, um, you can make two isomers from this, which means that those, uh, those two compounds. And by the way, guys, the two mirror images in here, let's say this A and this B, we call them enantiomers. So the enantiomers mean mirror images. And they are so different to each other. Another simple thing to describe the optical isomer, if you look at your hands, you can say that they are mirror images to each other. Okay, if you just put a mirror in here, you can say that they look like each other. But, but, but if you put them over each other, they never superimpose we can say that your right hand is not the same as your left hand. They are not superimposed. 
So this actually good proof and that happens in the molecules in chemistry in which you have two molecules, they are mirror images to each other and they are not super impossible. Okay, and this is a key word by the way, super impossible, which means that if you put them over each other, they never ever have the same shape. I ask you, look at this molecule and just like tell me how many um, chiral centers we have here. How many chiral centers? Which means you have a carbon that is bonded to four different groups. And uh, the first time you feel like, oh my God, this is a horrible question. If you look at this molecule in general, you can say, oh, it's not symmetrical. Which means that we could have a lot of chiral centers. And now let's go to the, uh, um, the first one in here. Okay, look at this. Do we consider this to be a chiral center? Okay, let's go. First of all, it's bonded to OH group, but here it's bonded to carbon, and here it's bonded to carbon. At that point, you say, no, we have identical groups, but you have to, to look furthermore, which means that you do not stop in here. You have to look at something else. You have hydrogen in here, and you have OH, and it's bonded to this carbon and this one here. This one here is not the same as this. They are different. And that's why you can say, oh, this is a different group in here. We can do the same process uh, for the whole thing here. So we have OH in here. We have carbon. And here we have something like this in addition to the hydrogen. So we have a cattle center in here. If you look at this carbon in here as well, it's, um, it's bonded to... Carbon in here, another one in here, another one in here, and here. And you can see that all of these are different as well. This contains two hydrogens, which means it's not a chiral center. And that's why we remove it. We don't need it. And the same thing here, because those are not chiral centers. They have um, two hydrogens. We don't count them. We don't count this. We don't count this because it contains two hydrogen as well. And the same thing here, it, it contains two hydrogens. This one works as a chiral center because, you know, we have three groups in here and they are not the same. We have another one in here, by the way. We have another one in here, another one in here. We ignore these because they contain, um, you know, like two hydrogens. This one contains the three hydrogens. We don't need it. The same thing here. And we don't count this because it contains double bond. It's not. And here we don't count them. So, at that point, if I ask you how many chiral centers we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six chiral centers. Okay.